Hi, I'm Eric Kunz, Senior Product Manager with Furuno. And I'm Clayton Pattison with Technical Support. And in this episode of Furuno Connections, we're going to get into what it takes to change out the existing transducer on Team Fortune. It's 39-foot CV. Big job. Yeah, it's a huge job. It's a flat-bottom boat, mm -hmm. and we're going to go from a, a relatively small 1-kilowatt uh, transducer yep. to a combo 2-kilowatt transducer. That can, that's going to give us that deep drop yeah. capability, including giving all three systems, the DFF3D and the DFF3, is both elements, the best placement on the boat. Yeah, and but before we do that though, we're going to talk to Pete Braffitt and Chris Laro from Aramar Technologies about transducer placement and what's important to keep in mind. Let's go get to it. Okay, so we've talked about the choice of transducer, beam angle, frequency, and so forth. Now, let's talk about installations and mounting. There's a lot that has to go into this as well. You wouldn't think so, but there is. So let's talk a little bit about installations. What do you guys recommend what do you guys don't recommend? Well that's probably one of the most critical. You can pick the best transducer, the perfect transducer for that combination. You put it in the wrong location, it's not going to perform like you yep, expect. You can screw it up in seconds doing yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So general rule of thumb is to make sure that that transducer has clean water flow over the face of the transducer okay. at all performance, at all running speeds and that okay. way the performance is going to be consistent across the board. So on a, a center console like this, if you've got a delta pad in the rear, sometime you know midship from the console back is usually good, hole. clean. Yeah. So we're talking, in. we're talking like a nice big flat spot in the keel. If that's right? an option, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, these transducers, where they're flush mounted into the keel, that can be mounted even on a V, and you would just glass that in. But the goal is to make sure that there's clean water flow running over the surface of okay. that transducer. Mm -hmm. If you have a step tall vessel, that has to be just forward of that first step. It can't yep. be behind the step. The whole point of a step is to pull air under the boat, give it lift, and reduce yeah. drag. Mm -hmm. But of course, that's an enemy of a transducer. Aerated water isn't going to yeah, perform no, at all. No, it's not going to do anything So at regardless all. of the hull type, mm -hmm. you just need to make sure that you have the cleanest possible water flow. Typically, that's going to be on the center line of the vessel. In mm -hmm. almost all cases, you're going to have very similar performance depending on, you know, regardless of what that uh, vessel is doing at that time. Okay. On the center of the vessel, it's going to be very, um, very consistent. Okay. And here in the Pacific Northwest, for example, there's a lot of aluminum hull vessels. Oh, yeah. As opposed to Florida, where point. mostly you're talking fiberglass boats. Yeah, like glass the CV boats. behind us. Yeah. 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 So what about the differences in transducer material so that we don't have issues? That's a good point. Yeah. So yeah. like you were saying, here it's the aluminum hull. So you wouldn't want to use a, a bronze housing transducer with they the aluminum match, hull. Because they don't match, right? They, yeah, so a, you're going to get that galvanic isolation right. with the bronze. Oh, so. yeah. Corrosion. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. Yeah. So the stainless steel option for aluminum hulls is what you're going to want to go okay. with. Okay. Um, or, again, a pocket mount. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, most of these transducers, it's important for everyone watching to know, are available in both bronze and even plastic, depending on the type of boat mm -hmm. or installation, and stainless steel. So in this case, these two are stainless steel, perfect for aluminum hull vessels. Mm -hmm. For fiberglass vessels, we typically want to use bronze. Mm -hmm. yep. All right, it cool. should be worth noting too that even with a stainless steel transducer, you still want to isolate it from the hull. You don't want them mm -hmm. electrically Touch contacting it. each right. other. Oh, yeah. But the similarity of aluminum and stainless is much closer on the nobility scale. Mm -hmm. You would never use, as you mentioned, you'd never use bronze in an aluminum hull. Mm -hmm. Bronze can be used in uh, wood or fiberglass mm -hmm. equally okay. as well. Yeah. Okay. So right. I guess speaking about wood, you would never want to use a, a plastic transducer. And wood, just, just expansion. Okay, so. sure. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's swelling. a good point. It's a swelling, that's yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. Excellent. I don't see a whole lot of wooden hulls, but mm -hmm. now once we've got the transducer picked, we figured out what it is, we know what our hull type is, now what? How do we, you know, what's the proper procedure to put it in? Well, really? First and foremost, follow the factory instructions. All the transducers come with installation <laughs> right. You guys all heard RTFM. that, right? Exactly. You guys yeah. all heard that. As that seems, yeah. there's, there's a huge. lot of mistakes that have been learned that are fixed in there. I mean, right. those instructions yeah. will give you pointers on what's critical. Uh, some of the questions that we get often are on the, the sealing material. Right. There's a lot of options out there for sealing material. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One of the biggest ones is 3M4200 or 3M5200, which is better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My opinion, 4200 will, will not yeah. fail you. 5200 right. so, will if you yeah. ever try to yeah. remove it. What's the difference between the two? Because 5200 tends to be much more permanent. It's much okay. more rigid and permanent. Um, mm -hmm. I've seen transducers coming out. Somebody's upgrading from a earlier model to a newer model. Mm -hmm. Removes that transducer with 5200 and literally takes fiberglass lamination yeah, with it. Yeah, you literally tear the whole part to get yeah. it out. It's too okay. permanent. I've never yeah. seen 4200 fail. Is more forgiving. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I, exactly. I believe so. Yeah. 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 In okay. case you have to change yeah. anything. So you heard it here. When you're installing a transducer, read the instructions. Yeah. Pretty simple. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> So, so I all right, so you know, we've talked about that. 
Let's take uh, let's take a break and let's go on the boat and see how these new, okay. uh, how so this new transistor is going to install, mm -hmm. and we'll put it in, mount mm -hmm. it, and get everything working. Yeah, we're very fortunate to have the Aramar guys here with us to help us put this new transducer in this boat. So we're going to dive into that next. The transducer on this boat is currently a B260, which they've pocket mounted up in the hull. It's all glassed in. They made a pocket for it and so forth. First thing we have to do is cut the sealant around the housing so that we can knock it out from the inside. So let's go up on the deck, get in the hatch, and get to work. Okay, so we have the bilge hatch open, and you can see the B260 transducer stem coming up through the bottom of the hull. What we're going to do next is we're going to cut some zip ties, we're going to cut the cable, and then we're going to use some blocks of wood and knock the transducer out because we've already cut away all the sealant from the underside of the hull. We also have to move uh, the switch for the bilge pump and this bilge pump back here to get it out of the way so we have some room to work. And here it is. Here's the old transducer out of the boat. Uh, it didn't put up as big a fight as we thought it was going to do. Now the next task is to do all the layout work for the new PM411 transducer that's going to go in the boat. Uh, we have to build a new pocket mount for it and do some glass work. So that's what we're going to be working on next. So as many of you know, replacing a transducer takes a lot of time and a lot of effort, especially when it comes to fiberglass work, as is one of the most important things to keep the hull watertight and strong. So to do this right, we brought in our fiberglass expert, Elias Garcia, to talk to us a little bit about it and do the work on this boat. Elias? Hey, how do you doing, man? Ah, thanks for coming down. So I know you've been doing this a long time. Yeah, 28 years. That's a long time to be doing fiberglass work. <laughs> yes, <laughs> to get sir. a face full of dust. Yeah, yeah. Um, so give us a rundown of what we're going to do today on this boat. Well, the first thing we're going to do, we're going to clear whatever is in the way inside. You know? Yeah, the so, old transducer and the bilge pump and a couple of switches yes. and things. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. and then uh, what we're going to do, we're going to get the, the, the drawing or the dimension or the, you know, what mm -hmm. we need to... Uh, All the big to, the dimensional drawings? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and go in and eat and make some marks and before I start doing the cuts, you know, and... When you're cutting a hole in a hole like this, <laughs> you really want to make sure you've got the right layout before you put a saw to it. I definitely yeah. agree with that. Measure twice, cut once. Exactly. Is because it's not, it, this hole, like this, this bowl is so, I'm pretty sure it's solid fiberglass underneath. It's How a, thick the, do you think it is? It might be three quarter, one inch for sure. So, <laughs> that's yeah. A, that's a decent thickness layer of fiberglass to cut through. Yeah, it's a job. To, it's a oh, job to oh, cut yeah. it out. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. you want to make sure the cutout is perfect because when okay. you put the transducer, you want just a real little gap. Mm -hmm. So it fits right, and uh, you can use some, whatever material you're going to glue it in, but it has to be right cut out. Okay. I, I mean, I can see that. You want to leave a little bit of gap so yes. that it's not too tight, so you don't have to beat it in, mm -hmm. and yet so that you can actually get it in there and then seal it in, and it's not going to fall out. Exactly. That's perfect. Mm -hmm. Getting that mixture is definitely correct. Mm -hmm. So now that we've got all the layout work done, we've put the template on the bottom of the hull and laid everything out, and we're ready to start, you know, getting dirty. What's next? So next, I have to get all my tools ready. So okay. I'm going to need a skill saw. Sometimes I use a saw saw in, uh, mm -hmm. in grinding, you know, 7-inch grinding okay. or 4-inch, whatever. Okay. So uh, I, we got the marks already. So mm -hmm. now I'm going to drill a hole, you know, in 3A, uh, drill a bit. Okay, hole. like a pilot hole? Yes, okay. a pilot hole. And then I'm going to start cutting with the skill saw. And okay. then after I kill, cut it all the way around, I have to uh, grind to line up to make sure this is nice and cut, you know, the cutout is so nice okay. and beauty, yeah. Well, before we go any further, though, I kind of want to give you guys a little bit of a, an example. I just bent this up out of a piece of paper to show you what the hull looks like. So here's kind of a demonstration of what the hull looks like towards the aft section of the boat. And you can see the keel is nice, big, flat, and wide. And then our transducer, it's going to taper towards the front of the boat. And this is where we're going to put our transducer. So it's going to nestle right between those two edges on the, the big flat keel and will give us a nice clean uh, location to put the transducer so it's out of the boundary layer and it's not going to have any problems with turbulence coming off the hull. 
All right, so we're done making a mess. We've cut out our hole in the hull and uh, reshaped the hull and got everything all cleaned up and ready to go. And then what did you pull out? Let's have a look at the... Well, uh, this is what we took out uh, from the bowl. You can see, remember I said three quarter? Well, yeah. this is like a, an inch, inch wow. and a quarter. You look at how thick yeah. that is. So Good he, Lord. So here's what the old one was. You know, the yeah, old transducer. Yeah, that's the housing yeah. for, the, for the bronze one. And this is the line. I don't know if you can see the line, but I put a center line so yep. we can mm -hmm. measure exactly what the cutout has to be. Yeah, for side to side. It, exactly. And, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and then this is what we got. And this, it was more hard than what I thought. Because really? uh, the trailer was in the way. You can see it was like a five inch space. Oh, so, really? Yeah. So it's why oh. you see the curve right here because I have to cut it with my saw <laughs> and angle. So, oh, but I, I okay. did it. Everything looks really good. So we straight okay. out everything. And it, I think we're I, ready. I stuck my head in there just to have a look, and it looks really, really good. Yes. So what's our next step? After we've got all this cleaned up and the holes cut, what, what are we doing next? So next thing I'm going to do, <laughs> because uh, we're going to use a, a high-density composite foam core to mm -hmm. uh, make a box. Yeah, I think you gave me a sample yes. of that. So I got to say, you had a, like you see right here, mm -hmm. uh, this is a, a fiberglass panel is what it is with a yeah. composite uh, foam core. So what you see outside is a fiberglass, both sides, you see it right here. Okay. Yeah, this is 36 on fiberglass, one each side. Yeah, so, so it's a sandwich panel, yeah. yeah. It's a sandwiched panel of high density foam with two layers of fiberglass yes. on the outside, one on each side, which makes it, you know, really strong. And then it's gonna be fiberglass over this Oh, thing. so we're gonna fiberglass yes. over the top of yes. this even. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so this box is not coming out <laughs> ever. Not without a sawzall anyway, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Well, let's go have a look at the box that you started, because you got started on it already. Yes, I started Well, let's walk over and have a look at the box. All right, so this is the box you've been working on, correct? Yeah. This is the same material I was talking about. This is uh, the front okay. glass panel. So, like you see, I, I make the four pieces cut out. Okay. So, I'm gonna, what I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, put these four pieces together, take the dimension of what I need. I think it's a six and a quarter what I need. We, okay. we need tiny uh, gap around. Okay. So we're gonna put these two bags together, and then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna round the rudder around really nice. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna put a glue it in in, in place there. Okay. Where so it you're has glue to glue it in the hole first. Exactly. Okay. Glue it separate first, and then glue it inside there. Okay. And then from the bottom of the bowl, I'm gonna measure up five inches. Okay, because that's then, the that's the depth of the transducer. Exactly. Is five and then I'm gonna do a cut out around. Okay, then you're gonna you know dress up the edge. Yes. And then you're gonna make a lid and yes. put a lid on it. Okay. Same material. We're gonna put a, a lid on it, and then I'm gonna make sure this is round and nice. And then we, I'm gonna uh, fill here around and the hall. I make a nice round uh, fillet, so that way it helps a lot to lay up all the fiberglass. Okay. We don't Perfect. want anything sharp because you don't want to, you want to avoid any air voids or air packets. You don't want you want to be solid fiberglass. Because there's there's no strength in air, exactly. so we need to get all the air out and get nice, good, solid contact exactly. with fiberglass to make sure that this box is strong. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm yes. thinking to maybe put like six layer of fiberglass over. Really, six layers. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's well, that's about what they put on the other yes. pocket when they mm -hmm. when they fiberglass it in too is about yeah. six five six layers. Yeah. So okay. So hopefully in this episode, you learn just how important it is to have the right transducer placement. Mm -hmm. On this 39CV, which is a flat bottom hull, mm -hmm. we had to use the delta pad. That's always going to give you the best performance mm -hmm. when you have a flat bottom hull is, hull is right in the center. Yeah. And hopefully it also gave you a decent idea as to what it takes to get a transducer out of the hull. Sometimes they're easy, sometimes they're hard, and not every installation is the same. So thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time. So thanks for watching, and if you like the exciting content that you've seen, click the link below to like the video and subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you'll be the first one to know when we have new content available with new product information and new exciting stuff from Furuno.